Turner has become rich and famous from her Saturday Night Live career, which amazingly now goes back almost 10 years. These days, she's making movies, having a love affair with her current co-star Gene Wilder, and as you'll see, dependent on her real life for the roles she has created on TV. I didn't come to Saturday Night Live with any um, characters. Yeah. I, I believe that they came out of the entire situation, the show, the demands of writers, the demands within a scene, um, the demand of just getting yourself on the air, yeah. on the show. Right. Um, sometimes somebody in costumes or makeup would show up with a funny wig, or they'd find an outfit and you'd think, oh, I want to put that on, I want to be that. Or uh, you'd be in a, in a scene and you'd think, I want to do this again. I'm going to find a comic way to, to do it again. Uh, so it was in that, th that, those five years that all these things got molded. Like I could never have done Roseanne the first year. I wasn't really? tough enough. Yeah. I, I hadn't lived in New York long enough. Yeah. I hadn't learned about the elements of television enough to sit in one like that and, and do Roseanne's but, but rap. The, but the, never mind. Did someone write that for you? Did someone say, hey, let's do this? I mean, how does things like that come about, which are right. so famous? Emily Latella um, is based on a woman who raised me. Her really? name is Mrs. Gillies, and she lives now in Ontario, in Canada. She's 89 years old. And she came to work for my family when I was four months old. And she stayed till I was 18. And she was a part of our family. Mm -hmm. Um, she is Emily Latella. That's where the voice comes from. That's where the mishearing comes from. Um, I could always do her because I spent most of my life with her. And uh, so it was a natural for me to go into that. Then the idea of putting her on the news came from different writers and things. And Now, now to do almost a, a self-analysis, let me ask you, if I were interviewing her right now, mm -hmm. what would she say about Gilda Radner. What kind of a girl is Gilda Radner? Uh, As knowing are you trying to trick me? <laughs> no. I, I, yes, I you are. You're trying a sneaky way to get me to do Emily Littell. Well, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I didn't mean to not uh, that. Yeah. She, um, what would she say? But I'm curious how you think she thinks of you. And it would be interesting for the audience to see you do it as her, but you needn't if you don't. Oh, <laughs> you do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, oh. <laughs> Look at what you do to a performer. <laughs> Should I do it? I don't know. Um, but I'm all dressed up and I have makeup on. My hair well, is all nice, and I'm gonna okay. do it. <laughs> but what did she think when she saw it? Did she know that you were doing? Debbie, you mean this woman who yeah. raised me? Yeah. Oh, she loved it. She'd phone she me up and give me ideas. She'd say, "Oh, you know what I did yesterday? I, I put the the orange juice bottle back in the in the cupboard, <laughs> and I put the glass in the fridge." <laughs> So it was, and I used to get letters from her, and I'd read them in the Emily Latella voice to people, and they couldn't believe it. And it was a way of helping the writers get right. her structure, you know. Her. Right. Now, let's get serious for a moment, because I want to talk to you about... Haven't we been being serious? <laughs> That's what well, I thought we were being. No, not too serious. I want to talk about, I know you don't want to talk about John Belushi, but I'll mention his name as an example, Freddie Prinz, which has given the American public the feeling that comedy is... is really almost a tragic business and the pressures and demands of people trying to be funny. Uh, how does that affect you? Is it hard for you to leave that behind and turn into, as in this movie, a more serious demeanor? Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of pressure in lots of jobs and, and even in just the world today there's lots of, of pressures and uh, I don't like to relate it to comedy so specifically because in my life it's made the difference between tragedy. It, it has uh, a comic view of the world is what saved me time and time again. Really? And, uh, and I love being funny and uh, so I don't want to, I, I don't want to think of it in that light. Um, now I can't remember the question. Well, that's good. My no, mind's no, that's, traveling all that's, around. Yeah, that's healthy to hear. I, I've interviewed a lot of comedians, and you're kind of unusual in that you are sunny and funny and pleasant <laughs> when the camera goes off. 
That's not the standard norm of professional Well, I'm surprised people. that I do this for a living. Are you? I'm surprised that you get paid for it. It was a, as big a shock to me as anybody. Were you always this way in high school? I was school? a funny kid. And uh, like I say, it was my way of choosing to deal with the world. At yeah. camp, if things got rough, you know, or, or at school, I chose that. Influenced a lot by this woman who raised me. Right. So that is part of me. That isn't to say I don't get in bad moods. Sure. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's just human. But I can be like a real jerk. I mean, sometimes I'm, I get obnoxious being funny, like I could be in a shoe store and they wish I would leave already. You know, I say, well, go in the back and I go in the back. And uh, so it's more a lifestyle for me yeah. than a job.